If you clicked on this video and are listening to these words, then you're clearly up for a challenge and I love that. You want to know how you can keep your Christmas Ponsettia alive after Christmas through the whole year and for it to bloom those gorgeous red bracts again next Christmas, but you don't understand why this plant inexplicably dies every year when the festivities have ended. The reason it dies is because it has quite frankly the most absurdly specific care requirements that most people don't know about. I'm gonna give you the exact step-by-step -step guide so that you can wow your friends and say you kept this plant alive all year and got it to bloom again like a real pro. I'm warning you though, this is not an easy process and requires you to follow these instructions very carefully. You'll see why shortly. The first stage of the process starts when you buy the plant in the first place. And it's absolutely crucial for the future success of your plant. Ponsettias are native to Mexico. And if there's one thing we all know about Mexico is that it's very rarely cold. Ponsettias therefore hate the cold. As soon as a Ponsettia is exposed to any prolonged period where the temperature is below 15 degrees Celsius, it is doomed. You'll never get it to survive past Christmas. There's just no way around that. So when you go out to buy one, you want to make sure you buy from a decent seller who is likely to have cared for the plant correctly. If they're displayed near an external door, or even worse, a forecourt outside, then don't buy the plant, it simply won't last. Carefully inspect the foliage and see if any of the leaves show any signs of wilting or discoloration. This is a telltale sign that has been exposed to cold temperatures, so I'd move on and buy the plant from somewhere else. When you found a plant that looks healthy, make sure the shop assistant wraps it up properly so that it's protected from the cold on the journey home. I wouldn't stop off and do some Christmas shopping on the way home and leave the plant in the car for a few hours either. This will lead to a short-lived plant. When you get your plant home, keep it somewhere as bright as possible in your home. An east-facing window where it gets at least six hours of bright indirect light is perfect. Ponsettias hate having wet soil and is one of the main reasons this plant dies after Christmas. When the top few inches of soil fill dry, top up with water, and then wait until it dries out again before watering again. If you water too frequently and keep the roots wet, then it will eventually die before summer. With bright light and the right amount of water in the soil, the plant will continue to have those red bracts until the end of January or even February. If you get to the beginning of March and you still have a plant on your hands, then you're in really good shape. This is now when we must give the plant a hard prune. Now don't be shy here, cut the plant right back so it's only five inches from the soil. This will encourage the plant to push out new fresh growth over spring and summer that will set it up nicely for brack blooming in winter. Look for a leaf node on each stem about five inches from the soil and cut right above that. New shoots will develop from this point. By mid-April, you should see new shoots growing happily and this is when we need to repot the plant. Choose a potting medium that is rich in organic matter such as compost mix in some perlite for good drainage so the roots don't hold on to too much moisture. This process is really important because it gives the plant a new lease of life with fresh nutrients that sets it up perfectly for the main growing season in the summer. From this point, you should start to fertilize the plant every two weeks and continue to give it as much natural light as possible. An all-purpose liquid feed suitable for houseplants will be perfect. Now that temperatures are warming up, you'll also need to up your watering schedule a little bit so that the plant doesn't dry out too much and wilt. You're feeling overwhelmed? It gets even more fun, just wait. So when summer comes around, the most important thing you need to be mindful of is temperature. Ponsettias are a bit of a Goldilocks plant and the ideal temperature for them is 18 degrees Celsius or 60 degrees Fahrenheit. Hotter or colder than this, then they tend to suffer. If you have an appropriate climate, then a good place for them is outside in the shade during the summer. This really maximizes the natural light they receive that is so important for blooming in winter. A lack of good natural light at this time of year will result in disappointing blooms. With lots of new growth coming through during the summer, it's a really good idea to pinch the tips of the stems back so they don't become leggy and encourages branching. Pinching halts the growth of the tip of the stem and forces the plant to focus its energy lower down and grow new stems. This will result in a nice full bushy plant that will eventually have lots of red bracts at Christmas. Summer's over and autumn or fall for my American viewers is around the corner and this is where the fun really starts. Ponsettias are highly unusual plants in that they require 16 hours of total darkness every day during autumn and early winter 
to develop those famous red bracts and then bright light for the remaining eight hours of the day. This is exactly the same to Kalankoes, another plant that flowers in the winter. The plant sends out these bracts in the winter in its natural climate, so it needs to know that it is winter in our homes. Otherwise, blooming will be delayed or not come at all. This next point is critical. It cannot receive even the slightest glimmer of natural or artificial light during these 16 hours. If it does, then blooming will be delayed. So at the end of September, put your plants somewhere in total darkness for 16 hours every day. If you have a cupboard that doesn't get opened, then consider putting it in there. You need to be mindful of any cracks in the door that might let any light in. Otherwise, the plant will think it's summer, and that includes artificial light. It's the total darkness of 16 hours in autumn that triggers the plant to send out red bracts. It does get a little bit more complicated though. You also need to maintain a minimum temperature of 15 degrees Celsius or 60 degrees Fahrenheit during this period. Any lower than this and the plant will not bloom. So unfortunately, you can't chuck your plant into a dark, cold basement this will likely be too cold for it. Once you've found this mythical place in your home, you should also cut down on watering to a much reduced rate to avoid the roots becoming soggy. It really hates this. You should also stop fertilizing. Bring the plant out of its dungeon every day for eight hours and place it in a nice bright spot in your home. If you really want to ensure success, then I would set a timer on your phone every day to get your plant in and out of the dark. You have to remember to keep moving the plant into darkness on time every day, otherwise the plant will likely not bloom. At the end of November, once color is visible on the plant, you no longer need to keep the plant in prolonged periods of darkness. You can move it to a sunny spot or at least six hours of bright light. The red bracts should become abundant, ready in time to display to your friends and family at Christmas. Now grab yourself an eggnog because you sure did earn it if you successfully pulled this feat off. Most house plants go dormant during the winter, but there is one way you can get them to continue to grow all year and I'll tell you what that is in this video here.